Good afternoon. My name is Penny Crook. I'm a co-director on the FAMES 3.0 Electronic Field Notebooks Platforms Project. I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I have been comparing notes with my collaborators, Dr. Brian Bolson-Stanton and Professor Sean Ross, and we've made this recording so we can share a few brief notes on our now near decade long history of wrangling user requirements for software development. I'll fill you in on our original approach and our more recent streamlined efforts. But first, a little bit about FAMES. FAMES stands for Field Acquired Information Management Systems. The FAMES mobile platform is an open source software package for arbitrary offline data collection. It was established by archaeologists in 2012. It was, in fact, originally called the Federated Archaeological Information Management System, but has been used by researchers from many fields in the years since. It is still in use, we are still actively using it, but it has been showing its age. And in 2019, we were lucky to receive the ARDC support to rebuild it from the ground up. When we kicked off the first iteration of FAMES nine years ago, and when we were focused on archeological data collection, we organized a four day stock taking workshop with 80 participants, including digital archeologists and archivists working in the US and the UK, and archaeologists working in all fields from across Australia. We wanted to learn about best practices and find out what our users really wanted before we started detailed requirements, documentation and scoping. Travel costs were subsidised in whole or part by our Nectar grant, and it was a big investment of time and money. It was really successful and an insightful experience and a lot of goodwill and interest was generated from it. From our own perspective, we certainly clarified some high level user requirements such as the need for modular and customizable design. This was a seminal point in our design approach when we realized that archeologists really never would agree on anything and we'd have to accommodate a number of individual workflows. This set us up for building a truly useful and flexible tool that has benefited researchers from many other fields. But in time, we realized that this think, think fest and other workshop style sessions that we ran had some limitations. These kinds of sessions tell you what users wished for, sometimes in their wildest dreams, not what they actually need or use. Also, some of the most vocal participants in those sessions were not the most active or representative user. We spent a lot of time and developer money building features, including complex GIS, that participants at that meeting insisted must be part of a minimum viable product. But those features were rarely and sometimes never used in the field. They were actually not what users needed. In 2016, we had the good fortune to participate in the CSIRO on Prime pre-accelerator program. That helped us bring a business case approach to the software and completely reevaluate our approach to user requirements. We conducted 70 one-on-one -on -one interviews with active and potential users and discovered the major barriers for uptake were not the fine-grained GIS features articulated by a few vocal workshop participants, but some more significant elements like full customization, data exchange and cross-platform support. The lesson we learned here was that instead of asking what features users want, we need to ask what features are, they, are users actually using, either in FAMES, earlier iterations of it, or in comparable products. And more to the point, what features were so valuable to users that they were willing to pay to have them developed. For our current platforms rebuild, we've taken a much simpler approach to user requirements generation. Firstly, we have a smaller group of engaged participants on call. They're active members of our, our project governance and leadership. Secondly, we have nine years of experience of customising hundreds of modules for individual users. So we've chosen three existing modules. That's three uh, standalone data collection packages, one from archeology, span one from geochemistry and one from oral history. And we've used these as a basis for our user requirements generation. If there's a feature that is not in one of those three modules, we're not spending a minute of developer time on it at this point. We're adding them to a roadmap for future development uh, uh, to get around to when we can or when users actually ask for it. We are, of course, continuing some good practices for managing user requirements that were established in the original FAMES build, 
That includes scripting very detailed user stories in JIRA, ensuring that we have unanimous agreement from our leadership group on prioritizing those stories and defining our minimum viable product. Inevitably, there will be compromises and crumple zones, some requirements for desirable features that may not be feasible come release time next year. By having these goals clear and upfront, the task of our product owner, Brian, is made a little bit easier. Of course, it's still not an easy job by any stretch of the imagination, but it is essential to have a single voice liaising with our developer team. Here's an example of one of our user stories that begins with a statement that is uh, user driven. So we uh, keep that in mind throughout the development process. Just a quick note on the process of translating user needs into a developer to do list. As part of our alpha development, we clarified our goals into something we call the single expensive sentence. For alpha, it was to demonstrate the foundational capabilities of FAMES 3, specifically loading a module from a specification, data entry on all OSs, and uh, asynchronous data exchange on an append-only data store. This touches on two of the primary user needs for FAMES 3.0 that I mentioned from our CSIRO on Prime work, cross-platform support and better data exchange. This simple sentence took 20 odd hours of one-on-one -on -one meetings to translate into four epics and 42 individual stories, of course, each with their own multiple appendages of Jira tickets. And all of that was so the dev team could get to work just for our alpha release. Translating what you think users need into what you can build within the budget available is harder than you think, even when you anticipate that it will be the hardest task. We knew what we were up for and it was still a lot of work. Uh, as you work through these requirements and queries and refinements of your developer goals, it's essential that you keep those user requirements foremost in your mind. Uh, that's all we wanted to share today. I'm sorry we can't be around for Q&A, but if you wish to get in touch with any one of us, uh, here are our email addresses. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your time.